Hi, it's me again with Corel Raw Tips and Tricks. And somebody posted this yesterday on Facebook. And I wasn't really even going to look at it, uh, but I had a little time. And it it's crystal clear of being sharp. And they do want to engrave it. There's some things I would do different. I would uh, redo the font. But I did this in not very long a time. And I just noticed I could have embellished it a little bit more with this circle around the police and through Mesa. Uh, but she wanted it just, a, I think, a basic deal to engrave. Uh, for the one I'm doing it for, I made it real little. Uh, I uh, zoomed it down so it uh, Corel will have a little faster time. I went to Bitmap and I resampled it. And by re making it small, I made it 463 dots per inch, which is great. I converted it to grayscale Bitmap. But first, what I always do is I make a copy of it and put the copy over there so I can always look at it. Go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale, and you get that. Now I'm gonna trace this. This time, since it's a good quality image, I use high quality image instead of clip art. <clears throat> if I was doing it for myself, I might wanna uh, test the clip art too, and you, you know, feel welcome to do that. Uh, you could really make this thing look just like the original. It's taking a little bit longer time because of the high quality image, but it's there. And now we have our image there. And you can see by moving it, it looks pretty good with the exception of this, you know, shadowing color that you're not going to really want uh, for engraving. So this thing is less than three. So I set my nudge factor to three. I take the image and I'm going to go to object and ungroup it. Then I'm just going to start moving things over. So the circle is pretty good. Take the Y and I'm just going to, I'm just holding my finger over the right uh, arrow button and I'm just moving it over. So it's going to be right where it was originally. The top text came out pretty good. Whoop, you don't want that. And what you could do is either go backwards or just delete it. Go ahead and do the two dots. Now, the some of the fonts, maybe the outer ones did better. So I would uh, think about uh, redoing the uh, fonts in the middle to get them a little clearer. And you'll see in just a second what, what I'm talking about. So let's take the Mesa. And you can see the, the M of the Mesa's broke up into four parts. I'm going to have to zoom in here, but just when you're doing this, just make sure you right click it instead of down click it. So you're getting all the parts, but it's going to be broken apart. And there's ways around that. And I'll just take the Arizona. Whoop. So I'm just going to back up here, hit the A, the N, O, Z. So really just the Mesa so far was messed up. Then the police is going to be the same up top. Just make sure you get it all. And there's two schools of thought on this. You could uh, take away the black and then fill it in. Whoop, got a little bit too much there. But that's just how the image is gonna go. So that's okay. Um, secondly, I'm gonna take this ribbon and move it over. And man, this even worked better than the first time. Um, I actually redrew that. Um, I don't like that mountain part, but we'll go ahead and get the rest of the mountain. Wow. See, that's going to be pretty cool and great just like that. Uh, this is actually working better than when I did it. Now I'm just going to go to try to grab the mountain in the background. Try not to do any of the, the, the scenery, the, the clouds, uh, even though that is cool and part of the drawing. Uh, I don't think an engraver would want to pick that up or pick it up. These different shadows of gray to black uh, might or might not show up in your engraving. You might have to, I would test this on a scrap piece of wood before I ran it. And, you know, maybe change these to a darker color and then the lighter ones to a lighter color. I'm just going across the board and I'm just, you know, I'm not looking at my hands. I'm just going by left or the right mouse button on the arrow key, 
or the left mouse button to select it and then the right arrow key to move it over. And you could, you know, you don't have to jump around like I'm doing, but you want all parts of the cactus. And, and what's so good about this, if you in, uh, in dense, uh, forget something, you can always go back when we look at it full scale. I don't like doing this without being a C uh, where I'm going, but I'm just trusting my intuition that it's working. And just remember that other grayscale is the background. See what it looks like. I mean, to be honest with you, with the exception of the text and a little bit of cleanup around this, you know, take if you have X7 or above, take your smoothing tool, make it kind of small, like 0.1, so you don't change anything but that line. And we've got so many different facets, we're gonna have to uh, combine that. You know, I'm pretty sure that's uh, maybe Times New Roman, but what we could do, let's try this. <clears throat> let's take the M and move it all out of the way. In the A, the Mesa. Now let's do this. Let's go up here to object and combine it. That's gonna make the blacks all one piece. Looks pretty good, it would need some cleaning up. But once again, I would, I would think about um, well, that worked out pretty well. The A's messed up a little bit. Um, you know, we've got some separation. So what you, another thing, and I just mentioned it a while ago, what we could try, I'm not 100% sure it'll work because I don't know about these colors, but we could try it. Let's go with black. So we're gonna fill in the void of where those colors were, and then let's nudge them over. This is gonna be the way to do it. Now, that because that's all black. So I would go with that method. It's still a little bit clean up, but the difference is now when you clean it up and it'll, it'll stay together. Don't forget you need to click on your item. You know, like on the A, you know, take the, I almost take the shape tool and do this and just get rid of those, you know, uh, bad spots instead of trying to smooth them out too much. And that looks pretty good. I don't know. I would do the same thing on the police. Um, with the exception of this C, you know, it'd be better if you could find out that font. Now, like on this circle, this circle is connected to some other things, so we can't really do too much about it, but we do need to clean up that circle, see all the jagged edges. Maybe the smoothing tool will We'll work on this. And, you know, whenever I am engraved or something like this, I always think, how big is it? I mean, if it's huge, these little facets are going to show. But if it's only like two inches, nobody's ever going to see it. Let's do a little bit more smoothing, like right there. Remember, you got to click on the item. But see, we lost a little bit right there. Let's do a little bit more. You could always take the Smart Fill tool and fill in that void. We might even be able to fill that in. But we could take that all away and combine it. The only thing I'd really, what else I'd like to do is put a, put this line. But that, you know, that's pretty easy to rebuild this. And I think that would engrave pretty well. Now, the only other thing you could do would be, let's do this, let's, Group it together, control G, and let's hit P, put it in the center of the page. And that's a pretty important aspect. You can see the, the uh, symbol I drew earlier. And to get that, because it didn't trace as good that time for me. Now what we can do is take a, an ellipse and hit P, holding down the shift key to make it a little bit smaller. And what you could do is we'll try this. And I grouped it together, so I got to ungroup it. Try to grab the public safety and left click, right click. I did the police too. So in this case, it would be a good candidate for 
the freehand pick tool because that way you can go around and pick. I don't know if I got the Y. See, I didn't get the Y. Let's do it one more time. Freehand pick tool. Just make sure you get everything, but don't get something else. And then you could left click, right click, do the same to both sides, and then use the, well, we're gonna mess up the outside line. Um, you know how they kind of, so you could either left, two things we could do. We could one, we could uh, try to fill this in with a lighter gray and then fill our letters back in with, you know, that's what I was trying to do is gonna fill this all in with black. But I actually think if you left the letters black and just fill this in with a circle, now you've gotta go back and fill in the inner part where the smart fill tool could get, not get in. And <clears throat> that might uh, be the thing that's gonna make it stand out. Then don't forget to take your line away and it's kind of hard to grab it sometimes. Um, you know what we can do, we can nudge that out of the way to get our line and hit delete, then nudge this back. <clears throat> and then you could still put a, you know, somewhat of a box around there. You could make this line a little thinner. Um, you know, it's just a smart feel tool. You could draw two lines a little thinner. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.